Howdy doody, my name is Susie and today I thought I would share with you how to make some different nut milks. I'm new to making nut milks. I've been experimenting for the last week, but I wanted to share with you what I found out. And the first thing that I found out is that making nut milks is really very, very easy. All it takes is a cup of your nut with four cups of water. You blend it, you strain it, and you drink but there it. are a couple of little tips and tricks in order to making your nut milk really super delicious. And I'm gonna show you that. And we're gonna be making almond milk, walnut milk, cashew milk, and oat milk. And they're all quite unique and have some different uh, properties. Some are thinner than others, some have more flavor, some are more glutinous, some you can heat, some you can't. But basically, generally speaking, for the nut milks, you're going to be using one cup of your raw nuts, and you don't want nuts that have been roasted and salted, etc., because we're trying to make a pure, clean drink. So you want your one cup of nuts, raw nuts, and four cups of filtered water. That is the ratio for making the nut milks. It's gonna give you a certain consistency. You can add water if you want it thinner, or you can reduce the water if you want it thicker. But generally speaking, these are the ratios we're going to be using. So one thing that you do have to do prior to making your milk, and that is soaking the nuts overnight. And what that is going to do, and I've got all the different nuts that I've soaked overnight. And there are recipes out there where they do not soak the nuts, but I think soaking is a good idea because what it does it really plumps up those nuts, it rehydrates them, and then you can see all this dark water. I'm going to remove that, and then we're going to use these soaked nuts to make our milk. It's also said that by soaking the nuts overnight, it also makes the milk more digestible. So let me strain these over clean water. Really, the only thing that you're going to need is your cup of nuts, some filtered water, and a blender. You'll also need a sieve and some cheesecloth or uh, a napkin, doily, handkerchief, something to filter those nuts through so that you just get the pure, clean milk. And I'm just going to strain them and rinse them with clean water. So you want to take those strained nuts and this is what we're going to use to make our milk. So you can definitely notice the difference. These are our dried walnuts that we started off with and this is after soaking them. You can see that they've swollen and grown. Here are the almonds. You can see dried and how much uh, larger they actually are. The cashews turned out looking almost gray, but they're nice and soft. And I can just show you. I could break that with my hand. That's the soaked cashew. And of course, this is the raw cashew. So you can tell the difference between the two. This is very soft. And that's what we want for our nut milk. Now, while the quantities are the same for all the nut milks, we're not going to strain the cashews. The cashews are different in that they are so soft and they are so full of fat. They are much higher in fat content than the other nuts, but they're so soft and tender that we're gonna be able to blend this right into our milk. So we're not going to be straining the cashews. So we're gonna just put those off to the side, but we will need to strain the almonds and the walnuts because we're going to be left with pieces that we want to catch in order to strain that milk so it's nice and rich and silky. So once you've strained your nuts, all we're going to do is we're gonna take that one cup of nuts, we're going to blend it with four cups of chilled water. 
So we're always blending these nuts after we've soaked them overnight. So I've got my one cup of nuts. And we're going to add that to our blender and then we're going to top it off with four cups of water. So we're going to blend this until it's smooth. And if you've got a high powered blender, it'll probably take you um, two to three minutes. This is not a high powered blender. So it's going to take me maybe three to four minutes to really purify that. So I've been blending that for four minutes because I don't have a really high powered blender. You can see how nice and frothy that is. And basically there's just little specks of the nut that I can see in there. So the next thing is we're going to strain it and I've got some cheesecloth. You want to be able to use something that you can pull up and squeeze. Pour it through your sieve. And you can see that the color is beautiful, pure white. And of course, the tighter the weave on your cheesecloth, the smoother the milk that you're going to get without having any like bits or pieces. And that's why they sell nut bags specifically. It's a much tighter weave. But I've also seen people use a t-shirt. But regardless, I've got the cheesecloth and it's working for me. I'm just not going to squeeze too much to get that pulp out. And of course with clean hands, you just want to squeeze as much of that liquid out as you can. That cheesecloth actually worked quite well and I just layered it four times. So then you're going to be left with all this pulp that you've got here. You can see how this is all the almond pulp. And what we're gonna do is we're going to keep that because we're gonna be able to use it for our baked goods. Keep this, put it in a bag and put it in your freezer. And essentially uh, when you're ready to use it, you can use it in baked goods. You can put it on a cookie sheet, dry it out and turn it into almond meal. So don't throw out your nut meal. Put it so that's basically making almond milk in a nutshell. Now you can taste it at this point and if you like it, bottle it, put it in the fridge and drink it that way. But I find that it lacks a lot of flavor. It certainly is not a replacement for milk or what I'm accustomed to. So I'm actually going to take my almond milk and I'm going to flavor it. And this is the basic flavoring for all the nut milks. It just gives it a little bit of extra flavor and enhances it. That I've read most commonly, everyone seems to use a pinch of salt. It really helps. A pinch of vanilla or half a teaspoon of vanilla and then one to two tablespoons of a sweetener or one tablespoon of a sweetener or even dates. So you could use a tablespoon of honey, maple syrup, agave, coconut sugar, although coconut sugar would impart a different flavor or just a couple of dates. So I'm just going to add two dates. Now I'm doing this separately. I could have added all this when I was blending the nuts in the first place but it gives you an opportunity to taste the milk on its own without any additional um, sweeteners or the salt and vanilla. And if you like it that way, certainly do it. And then if, it, if you find it too bland, then you can add these ingredients. And I kind of did that backwards. I'm just going to run the milk through the sieve again because I've got those bits of dates in there. And it does change the color slightly. It makes it a little bit creamy. So 
now that we've made our almond milk, we're going to do the exact same thing with our walnuts. So we're gonna take our one cup of walnuts that we soaked overnight, rinsed and drained, and we're going to add four cups of filtered water. But this time I'm going to go ahead and add a pinch of salt now because I know it really makes a difference. I'm going to add a touch of vanilla and this is all optional. And for the walnut, I'm going to use about a tablespoon of maple syrup. Now it's only been about two minutes, but it's really liquefied this. So I think I'm gonna stop and I'm going to strain. So this is much lighter in color than the almond milk. The, uh, the almond milk was more opaque. This is more watery. And if you've never made nut milks before, I mean, this is just a great experiment. I actually started off by only using, cutting the recipe in half, just so that I could experiment with the different nuts to see which ones I like better. There you go. And uh, yeah, we definitely did not get as much pulp out of this nut as the, the almond. There's much less, but this is what it looks like. You can see it's almost like a little walnut dough. So we're just going to filter it. And these things are trial and error. If you find that your milk ends up being a bit grainy because some of the particles went through your cheesecloth, then maybe you want to filter it a second time. So we should be getting, because we're using a liter of water, four cups of water, and then of course the one cup of nuts, we should be getting around a liter and half a cup of milk. So now the next milk that we're going to want to make, it's going to be the cashew, and I think this one is, um, well, I think it's going to be something special because it has that higher quantity of fat. I think it'll be much creamier. Plus with the cashew milk, we're going to be making it exactly the same way we did with the other milks. Oop, we need some water. So we're using the exact same amount, one cup of our cashews that were soaked overnight and four cups of water. Now, if you didn't want to soak the cashews overnight, um, I've read and I have tried it, but for a different recipe where you take your cashews and you soak it in boiling water for 10 minutes. And that basically skips the step from having to soak it overnight. But I think that for digestive purposes, maybe soaking it overnight might be better, but I'm not 100% sure. So at this point, I'm gonna be making my cashew milk. I'm going to be liquefying this cashew milk. We're not gonna to have to strain it at all. So I'm going to liquefy it first. I'm gonna taste it to see what it's like with nothing. And then if I feel that it needs um, a pinch of salt or a little bit of sweetener, then I'll add it at that point. Now yeah, that's only been two minutes. It smells like milk. Yep, it does. So it's a it's a thin milk. So let's just see what it tastes like. Um, have the consistency of milk and it has that nice creamy feel in your mouth. There, I'm sure there are 
tons of people out there that love drinking this just the way it is. But I am going to add a pinch of salt. And I'm going to add a touch of maple syrup and a little bit of vanilla. And this is just, I mean, it's all based on personal taste, but for me, I want to make something that I actually want to drink. All right, here we go. Now, the great thing about the cashew is that you don't have to strain it which means it's much faster. And if you wanted to do the uh, 10 minute with the boiling water, you wouldn't even have to soak it overnight. And I've also read that the, um, the cashew milk is actually one of the few milks that will actually froth. The rest of the milks don't froth and uh, they don't really change the color of your coffee. So I would say these milks are all excellent to drink cold, but you can certainly warm any of them up and add them to a cup of coffee, but you're not gonna get the color and the froth that you want unless you add one other ingredient, which I'm gonna show you after I make the oat milk. What you're going to need is you're going to need whole rolled oats. You don't want to use quick oats because they're processed differently and they absorb too much water too fast. And that would almost guarantee a slimy oat milk. So the secret really is to not blend it too much and to use really, really cold water. So, so four cups of icy cold water. I just added a couple of ice cubes to make sure it's really cold, or one cup of our rolled oats. And we're not gonna blend this for any more than 30 seconds. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna blend it for 20 seconds, stop it, and then blend it for another 10 seconds. You don't want to blend it to the point that you turn your oats into flour because it'll make the milk too thick. And like I said, it will make it gelatinous. Now, before you go ahead and poo poo the old oak milk, it actually, I preferred it over a lot of the other nut milks. It's very, very tasty and it's a great alternative. And this of course is the least expensive of the milks and you're still getting the benefits of the oat fiber, etc. I am going to want to add the salt and the vanilla, but I'm going to try honey this time and see what that tastes like. And I hope that 20 seconds is going to be enough to actually disperse this. So our four cups of cold water, and we are not soaking our oats. Water because to soak the oats would make the oats absorb too much of the water and activate that kind of gelatinous texture. So 20 seconds. So that is actually 20 seconds. And I think that that's enough. Those oat particles should be slightly bigger so that it makes it easier to strain. Now I will say that better than using a cheesecloth really would be a napkin or a thin cloth. And that's because if any of the oat particles go through, I find that it, it made the milk taste a little bit like flowery. And actually like uh, these napkins or handkerchiefs are really good for straining because they've got um, open enough weave to allow your fluid to strain. You can see how much slower it's straining because of the, the size of the weave than was the cheesecloth. But we're essentially doing the same thing. Do this, it's also much easier to release the pulp after you squeeze it as opposed to the cheesecloth, which has all kinds of holes in it, the nuts all get stuck. The nut meal 
gets stuck in all the holes, it's a little bit more difficult to clean. Now, this is the end of the oat milk that I made three days ago, and I think there's uh, it's become quite thick, but I think when I first strained it, the, look how thick that is. So it's become, uh, it's thickened, and I got more of the pulp in the milk, so that will change the texture. Keep that in mind, how you're straining and how fine of a mesh that you're using in order to extract most of the oats or leave some of the oats in, which would give you a much thicker milk. So I'm just short of a liter because I really did not squeeze out all of that water because my oats were processed too finely, but that is the oat milk. So now we've got our four milks and we're going to try to taste them. Now I will say before I go forward, once you store your milks, they will separate. So I previously made almond milk. This one is without the skin. This is with the almond skins. I wanted to see the difference. And in terms of taste, there was no difference, but in terms of color, there was a difference. You can see how the milk separates. So every time you take it out of the fridge, you give it a shake and then you pour your milk. In this case, this milk did not separate. And that's because I added aquafaba or chickpea water. Now, before I go into adding the chickpea water, I'm just going to take a taste of all the different milks and I'll let you know what they taste like. So first, this is our almond milk. Try the almond milk and it's nice and white and it's actually keeping that little foam on the top. So it looks creamy. That's nice. There is a hint of the almond. I think going forward, I'd probably add another little tiny pinch of salt in order to get um, a little bit more flavor to it, but it's nice and creamy. That would be a great milk. Let's try the walnut. Now the walnut milk looks almost watery, but the color is, um, it's much darker than the almond milk. And I think that's because of the skin. That really does not taste like anything. It tastes watery. Let's try the cashew. Yeah, that's what I thought. The cashew tastes, it's more of the consistency. It's creamier because there's more fat in it. So it almost tastes closer to milk than any of the other ones. So now let's try the oat. And the oat milk does separate. You can see there is uh, a bit of a, a difference. Yeah, once you stir it, it definitely becomes creamier. Yeah, that's good. It tastes good. It tastes like a vanilla drink because we've added the vanilla and the maple syrup. It doesn't taste like milk, but it definitely has that thickness or viscosity that you would find in maybe homo milk. So it is a very delicious uh, tasting milk in comparison to, it's definitely better than the walnut. Um, we're not getting much from the walnut milk. And I guess that's because there isn't as much fat. So I would say in terms of just taste, so I think if you had to compare in terms of flavor, the cashew milk is the creamiest. So it most closely resembles milk. Second would come the almond milk. And last would come the walnut milk. It's very th thin and watery. Uh, but in terms of the oat milk doesn't taste like milk, 
but it's nice and rich and creamy. And when you add the maple syrup with the salt and that uh, a little bit of vanilla, it becomes like a nice thick vanilla drink. Keep my milk from separating is I added chickpea water. And this is just the water that I drained out of a can of chickpeas. And also um, this water, the aquafaba, you can whip. So you can definitely turn it into a cappuccino. But I found that by adding about a quarter of a cup of the aquafaba water to my liter of milk enabled my milk to sit in the fridge and not separate. And the aquafaba really does not impart any flavor if you're using the chickpea. If you're using some of the other beans, you may get a beany flavor. But with the chickpea water, it really does not impart any flavor at all, but you can add it as an emulsifier to keep your milk from separating. You can also whip it up and use it in a cappuccino. You can see how thick that aquafaba is. And I can continue to beat it and create even stiffer peaks. So you can see, and there's nothing in this aquafaba. Um, you could certainly add some sugar to it if you wanted to sweeten it up. I've seen them actually uh, use aquafaba to make meringue, but I didn't add anything to it. And you just whip it up and you can add it to your cappuccino. I just warmed up the milk. It's blending quite well. This is the almond milk. We'll top that off with a little cinnamon. So you can add some of your milk in order to make your cappuccino and you just want to gently warm up the milk. I will say that if you're having a cup of coffee with milk in it, some of these milks will actually separate in your coffee. They will visually and in terms of flavor. Um, I think I would have to try the cashew and turning that into a cream in by using the three cups of water as opposed to four if I was to use it in my coffee because really the other uh, milks just didn't do it for me with the exception of the cappuccino because with the cappuccino I'm using much less coffee. I'm warming up my almond milk which already has that kind of vanilla flavor and then I'm adding my aquafaba on top which just gives me the foam. It's not really giving a lot of flavor so this works great for a cappuccino. So here are all the nut milks that you can make. They're very easy to make. Like I said all your milks will keep in the fridge for three to four days. The aquafaba if you um, are pouring out the chickpea water, you can keep that for three to four days. So they, the aquafaba and the milk actually expire at the same time, the whole time. So the aquafaba freezes perfectly. You don't have to use it all. Just put it in a nice cube tray and pop it in the freezer. And then every time you're making a frothy drink or a nice coffee, you can pull it out or a cappuccino, you can pull it out and whip it up and that's no problem. And if you are using or saving the water from chickpeas that you're making at home that you've soaked and you're cooking them, that residual water from the cooked chickpeas is the aquafaba water, is your chickpea water. Now, if you're making it at home, the water is going to be much thinner than the stuff that you get in a can. So all you have to do is take that water, cook it over a simmering pot until you reduce it by a third or um, a half until the liquid is thick, like the thickness or the viscosity of the water that you would get out of a, a can of chickpeas. And that water too, you can pop into ice cube trays, put it in the freezer and freeze it. You've got it ready whenever. And this aquafaba, you can top desserts. You don't have to just use it in your cappuccino. So those are the milks. I hope that you enjoyed this video. There's lots of other milks that you can make. They're using seeds. 
So you can make milk with hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. There's a whole myriad of things. You can actually even make chickpea milk, which needs to be cooked. But I think that'll be for another show. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you give me a like. If you try these and you like them, I hope that you share them. And if you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe. Until next time, enjoy.